Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another interview here on the channel. My name is Jeremiah Craig, and you guys know that every so often we get the chance to talk to folks in the industry, whether that means custom boot makers or cowboy boot owners or those businesses in the industry, uh, like marketers and stuff like that. So I'm so excited here to have another episode and today we have Bake Blake Baker, excuse me, Blake Baker in the house of JW Boot Company, Iscambia Boot Company. How's it going, Blake? It's great to have you here as a guest again. Jeremiah, it's going good. I'm uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, to speak with you tonight. Appreciate it. Anytime. And thank you for uh, all the support on the channel and the giveaway that we got going on right now, guys. If you're just joining and you didn't know, uh, we're doing a giveaway for a couple of brand new pairs of Escambia Boot Company boots. Uh, and if you're seeing this, there's about a week left to enter. So be sure to get on it on the channel and uh, watch those videos. They're a lot of fun. And we're going to have a couple of winners in some new Escambia boots. Blake, let's get right into it here. Because it's been a few years since you started, right? Let's catch everybody up. I'm wondering if you could sort of give us a little origin story about what inspired you to start JW Boot Company in the first place, way back in 2019, 2020 time. Yes. Um, so 2019, kind of kind of the fall of 2019 is when I launched. In fact, I think it was uh, my website went live about a week or two before Black Friday. So. Oh. So, you know, nice. late, late October, early November <clears throat> and, um, and kind of how I got into it was, uh, I, my background is in professional golf. I was a golf pro for many years. And when I was living here in Pensacola, I had a previous business and I had closed it down and I was kind of thinking about what I was going to do next. And one of the local pros reached out to me. And he was starting a teaching academy and he reached out to me and said, Hey, I want to, you know, get this going. I need some, another instructor. I need some help. You know, can you, can you help me out? And so I started working with him, giving lessons all day, but I would have big gaps between my lessons and the place where I was teaching was quite a ways from my house. So it wasn't worth me driving home, you know, kicking my shoes off for five minutes and driving back. So I kind of had some downtime and I started, uh, kind of contacting my old contacts in the golf industry. And, um, and I was buying, uh, um, kind of overstock of golf shoes and selling them on eBay. And, uh, and I kind of learned how to do that. I would, uh, there was particular pairs called the, uh, foot joy classics, which was a American made traditional leather golf shoe. And, uh, and, you know, made, made with the same kind of parameters that a good traditional boot is made, you know, trying to avoid as much artificial stuff as you can and have leather and, you know, good leather in there and good handmade quality. And, and, and the, the classic series actually, um, stopped being made in the, uh, I think the late nineties, early two thousands, but there were still tons of them, uh, around and, and I knew how to get them. And, uh, I had a, I had one of the biggest uh, collectors and sellers of foot joy classics who bought directly from me. And that was a big thing. And so I really uh, kind of fell in love with uh, a classically made shoe and, uh, and, and then, you know, selling it. The, the problem I went into is one, I wasn't controlling production. So I might get, you know, a whole bunch of size 11s and size 12s. And I have people calling me that need a nine or a 10, or I might have a bunch of white shoes and some people want, you know, black or whatever. So, that's when I kind of thought back to, you know, growing up in Texas and, uh, and always wearing cowboy boots and, um, to, to kind of follow with this story, my parents have lived in Mexico for 30 years. My dad's, uh, has tile factories down there. And, uh, and so throughout the years I've, I've gone there to visit them at one time I lived there. So I was very aware of, of different cities in Mexico and what they produce. I was very aware of Leon and it being a, uh, kind of the leather capital of the world. Um, and, uh, and 
so when I started thinking about, okay, you know, what, what can I make that I'd enjoy making that I can get involved with a, with a, a boot maker. And that's what led me to Leon and led me to my early roots in the uh, boot making business. That's awesome. What a story. And I want to remind everybody here in the live chat that you can ask Blake your questions. Uh, and I want to thank both uh, Brian Little and Keith uh, Tarnawaski for your super chat tips this evening. Thank you so much for the support. If anybody has any questions for Blake throughout this episode, um, just put them in the live chat and I will try to get to them and ask your question. Uh, this is a unique opportunity that you guys have in front of a owner of a cowboy boot company. So please put your questions in the live chat if you have any. Um, you're talking about golf shoes and reselling those and you know starting the boot business down in uh you know going to mexico and and talking with folks in leon starting the boot business you recently split up your company into a few different lines including escambia boot company right and then you also got the signature line right and the jw collection and of course the new traditions golf shoe line um can you explain why the rebrand and what each new line sort of encompasses well, you know, the, the big question since I started making or started uh, um, the cowboy boot business and uh, and just dealing with leathers and kind of kind of the, the nice construction that that cowboy boots in general have. The biggest question I got from one of my friends is, hey, are you going to make a golf shoe? Are you going to make a golf shoe? Obviously, that's my background. I got a lot of friends that are in the golf industry or play golf. And so that's been asked since day one. And it's kind of something that has been in the back of my head. But it, it, there, there's too much going on in the in the cowboy boot side of things, you know, for for most of the time for me to really take my focus off of that. But that's a good problem to have. Right. But um, I uh, the kind of how it how it ended up finalizing was um, I been working with a um, a boot maker in Spain and uh, the the original conversation my bootmaker in Spain was to come up with lace-up style boots, um, good uh, kind of ankle boots, things like that. I've had a lot of inquiries to my website about do you, do you, you know, sell any hiking boots or anything like that. And, and so if I wanted to get into them, I didn't want to offer, you know, the, the real inexpensive ones that you see in every footwear store that you walk into. I really wanted to have a good quality uh, boot like that. So, um, when I was uh, talking to this maker in Spain, uh, the conversation about my background came up and I mentioned that I, um, you know, used to be in the golf business. And in that same conversation, I found out that he made golf shoes and he made them the, the traditional way. And uh, and so that's that's how that came about. And, you know, along with that, we have, uh, uh, you know, driving loafers, moccasin loafers, dress loafers, um, golf shoes, uh, all sorts of styles of, um, ankle boots. I didn't know there were so many, you know, the juniper and the hiking boot and, and all sorts of them. Awesome. It's really cool that you're getting into that. And, and with, uh, makers from different countries overseas too. Spain has some awesome shoemakers in here. We got a question from Brian little that has to do with this. And he asks, it looks like your cowboy boot product line is branded with the Escambia name. Is that the only way you're transitioning from the JW boot company name? Yeah. Well, my, so I do have a cowboy boot line in the JW um, boot company name and it's new. And, uh, and, you know, Jeremiah, you're going to be uh, doing a, a review on those soon. Yeah. Um, it's going to hit next week this time. But I was when I when I kind of got into the 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 JW collection, which has the golf shoes and the lace up boots and the ankle boots and that thing. I was so impressed on how well made they were that I wanted to have a cowboy boot that followed in those steps. And so we have that boot and I only found it appropriate to make it part of the JW line 
the 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 grassroots traditional uh, made by hand, where everything's made by hand from you know a leather toe box to you know things like that. That that even handmade boots necessarily don't always have a leather toe box. So this is this is grassroots the way they've been doing it for a long time, and uh, and so that that's kind of what the JW brand is now. And then my Escambia brand is is kind of a a cross between you know the 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 modern boots that are being made with some features that are more traditional that I have um, incorporated into that throughout the years in in kind of a, as I've improved and learned more about the industry and things like that. Yeah, that's that's interesting that it's <clears throat> something that you've noticed and improved. You're talking about um, bringing your your boots along, but also maybe um, sort of navigating the industry as a whole um let's i had these two questions like scheduled for later on in the conversation but let me pull them in now because it sort of has to deal with that um and i want to start with this one what has been the biggest biggest what has been the biggest struggle that you've had so far you know sort of navigating the industry uh as just coming into it like three years ago so the hardest thing for me is the um is the financial backing of it. Um, You know, you hear, you hear cliches with certain brands, like they're not a boot company, they're a marketing company. Well, let me tell you something. Anybody that's making a lot of money in the cowboy boot business is a marketing company. There's, there's no other way you can sell them. It doesn't matter if you're the most traditional boot made, or, you know, if you're pumping out a thousand a day, the only way anybody's going to buy them is by marketing. And that is where I'm the weakest compared to all of my competition. It's, it's the hardest hurdle for me to uh, overcome. And it, and it's, it, it, it's a big struggle, you know, is, is the amount of money that I can put into marketing because of just how small my business is. Yeah, it's tough. It takes a lot of money to compete. I mean, with these huge, um, these huge newer brands, uh, they're getting investors uh, going at it. Like it's a, like they're a tech company. Um, and, they are marketing like that. So it is It is all branding and it's very difficult to compete with. And I'm happy that you have um, overcome that struggle over these years and are proceeding onwards in a really cool and unique way by already organizing your brands in, in a way that many of these brands already do like Justin, like they have all of their brands underneath the same house, right? Justin, um, Tony Lama, I think they also have Nikona and double H, right? So you're just doing that from the get go three years in. I think it's a great move. What has been the biggest surprise of running your your boot brand so far um, in this three year span? Um, The biggest surprise is how many customers I come across that have massive boot collections. Um, It's, I mean, I'm thankful for it. It's great, but I had no idea that there were people that had a hundred pair, 200 pair, 300 pair. In fact, I mean, even people that have 10 or 20 pair, that's it. That's a, you're, you're spending a lot of money and it really is, you know, whether, whether you collect Harley Davidsons or sports cars or baseball cards, boots is, is kind of right along with that. Yep. And, uh, and so that's, that was something I didn't know prior to getting into the industry, but it, it really makes this, uh, really makes this industry cool. Oh yeah. Especially with the customization that you kind of mm-hmm. offer. And I have, a, I just saw a question come through on the live chat and I'm sort of bouncing through your questions. I'm seeing them, but I'm sort of bouncing them as, you know, the, they kind of interweave in, into Jeremiah, the I have a question. Here. Yeah, go for it. I, is there any way I can see the live chat? I have meeting uh, chat on, but it doesn't show me. Yeah, sure. It's on YouTube, so you'd have to put it. You'd have to open oh. up YouTube and then and then and then sort of um, go through it that way. But I'll leave it up so you can see it afterwards. Okay. I'll okay. try to That's get to all these questions. So the question here uh, from Rich Depew uh, that has to do with what we were just talking about. He asks, it looks like there's a lot of customization available on your site. Does it ever get unwieldy having three insteps and so many color choices for embroidery and shafts on boots uh, like the Cervantes? 
It, it does. It's a difficult process to navigate. Um, it, so the the struggle is 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 making every single boot look exactly alike without being a machine made boot. And so that that that's the most difficult thing. And so um, and so there's a lot of things that I can talk about with the customer where they want this color or this stitching or whatever. And it, it could be just a touch off. And if it's not the vision that the customer has, then it's not the boot that they want. And so that that's always the hurdle that you have to overcome um, when you offer customization uh, um, things, especially when you don't have actual images of what the final result would be. And because I have so many options that you can choose from, there's no possible way I could have the the final image. And so it's an imaginary thing that is in the customer's head an imaginary one that's in my head, along with trying to make sure that, you know, your hides are matching up exactly and, and all of that. And, it, and it's a tough, it's a tough thing to, to navigate. But a unique <laughs> offering. So we're happy that you are going through the struggles of making that uh, because a lot of people have, I, I mean, if anybody is in the boot group, you guys have seen some of these really interesting JW Boot Company, Escambia Boot Company boots that people just pulled out of their imagination and Blake helped make them come to life at a really valuable uh, price, a really inexpensive price. So it, like, we're happy that you're making that offering because nobody else really is. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's do another question here. I'm going to bounce around these and uh, we'll, we'll get back to some of my planned questions in a second. I'm going to go back to the beginning here with Thorsmite asking, what does the JW stand for? The JW... Um, there, there, there's kind of two parts to it originally. So originally when I, um, connected with my boot maker, he was like all, uh, you know, boot makers land a little reluctant to take me on because I had no experience in the, um, in the, uh, boot business. And I didn't have the twenty thousand dollar check and say hey you know here's two months of production or whatever like that and so um so then i talked to him and i said well i said okay if, if you won't make me a private brand do you have a brand that you don't use that you will let me take on if i can prove i can sell these things then we will we will go from there and so he took and, and when I say brand, just a stamp, he took an old stamp that he had quit using because he was taking he was taking this name out of production and starting a new name. And uh, and he gave me that stamp and allocated it to me. And that allocation that that stamp was JW. And um, and so then from there, you know, I built the business and uh, that's that's kind of how it went. Yeah, that's an interesting way to to sort of save costs as a startup you mm -hmm. are just you're just gonna use the brand that they that they give you and then you're sort of stuck with that until you're at this point where you can rebrand right that's an that's a very interesting uh part to this rebranding story that i didn't know so thank you very much for the question thoris Mike. i appreciate that let's move on here to carlos's question who has been curious for a while about from the brand perspective, from your perspective, what kind of leather or exotic material is the hardest to make a boot out of from where you're sitting as not the actual boot maker, but the company owner? Um, well, from the company owner, the hardest one Uh, that's a, uh, I don't quite understand the question so as what's, far as being, what's the, what's versus the, what, being the boot maker or the owner when you're talking about hard to make. Well, I, I, I just, I just added that on there. His question okay. is what is the, what, is, what kind of leather or exotic material is the hardest to make into a boot? It's, it's so stingray. I'm curious. It's stingray for you, for you guys. It's, it's stingray. Yes. And, 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 just and, and I'll, 
just well the problem the problem with stingray is that it's difficult to um stitch through it one it's very tough right. but it's difficult to stitch through it and and stingray is a very uh, i call it an elegant hide i mean it is it, it's especially we only do polished stingray um i can do the the un polished kind, the sanded polished kind, but, but all I show on my website is the polished kind. And that hide is very, very unique. And, um, and to, to stitch through it is, is really difficult. So you'll get this beautiful shoe that has this unique stingray pattern on it. And then, you know, the, the, the we, when we've had to stitch through the, you know, through the stingray leather, it, you can't always make a straight line. And it just, it, it, here's this beautiful boot. And then it looks like, you know, an amateur was, was stitching on it and, and you break needles. It's just a difficult thing. And so, you know, uh, what I've recommend to my customers is um, let's do a thread that is the same color as the hide so that it blends in and you don't see, you know, because if you have like a, like a, um, a, a silverish stingray hide and you've got white thread going through it, then you're going to notice the imperfections in that white thread. Nice. Eel. Yeah, that's a great idea. Eel sometimes can be difficult. Eel is, um, is even though it is, it is a, uh, kind of a tough leather, uh, you can get batches of it where when you go to, um, stretch it, it just tears on you. Ooh. And, uh, could just because it's so thin. And so that's sometimes that we've had some hurdles with, uh, with eel. In fact, I had to take eel out of production for a while because we were, every time we'd go to make an eel boot, it would just rip on us. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's gotta be pretty expensive investment to have that, just that leather there that that's going to break. What, how did you overcome that new tannery? Um, that is a good question with, with, um, the Escambia line, I don't do a lot of communication with the tannery or, or get heavily involved in the, um, in the hide buying on that with the, with my JW line, I, uh, I, I have a lot more, uh, control and I can, you know, we can buy from any tannery you know, awesome. that I want to. Yeah. Awesome. I love yeah. to hear it. Uh, let's, I got here. I got another question from Smiggy. Are our boots and he asked this earlier on, or she asked this earlier on, uh, they asked this earlier on, uh, Smiggy asks, are they fully handmade? So he might be talking about any of the lines of boots. Are they fully handmade? And does the more expensive higher end shoes and boots, do they have more attention to detail on the inside of the boot and its construction? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, my, my, my JW line is fully handmade. In fact, in my, um, in my JW golf shoes and, uh, and, uh, hiking boots and, and those things, it, it's so much handmade and traditionally made that we don't even use a, uh, steel shank. We use a hard leather shank. And we continue to, we continue to, we use a hard leather shank that's, that's really, really hard, shape it like a shank. And then we continue to overlap it with leather and we fill in all that space with leather, uh, kind of the way it was done traditionally before there was cork and, and, you know, metal and things like that. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Got one more question here from Jim and then we'll get back to some of the ones that I have planned here. Uh, Jim asks, are you making larger sizes like uh, many other boot companies are? And uh, he wants to know if he's going to be able to get a 15 D at some point from you. In my, any of my JW lines, you can get a 15 D boots, hiking boots, dress shoes, any of them. So the, my new signature line, you'll be able to get a 15 D. Awesome. Yeah. There's lots more sizes. I'm pumped and so excited. I'm so excited including, for all. Including B width. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. Got the B width finally. Oh man. And they feel so awesome. Thank you for doing that, Blake. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. 
Let me get back to uh, some of these questions that I have planned here. Uh, over the past year or so, you had another sort of new event for you just keep keep doing these new things, growing and growing and growing. You also opened a physical store, an actual location for JW Boot Company. Uh, how's that been going? And what sort of experience are you trying to create with that store? So it is right now it's not open full time. It's open by appointment only. You know, local customers contact me. It is a workspace office and a showroom. So, um, you know, I used to have just all my business stuff and all my boots and everything stacked up in the living room. I was a brand new company and, uh, you know, and I'm also married with kids and that's a hard thing to do is to have, you know, boots all over the house and, 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 you know, shipping boxes and everything. And so I, I knew I needed to get an office and I started looking at just getting an office. And then I thought about it for a second. And I said, why don't I get something that I can make into a nice showroom where people can come in and look at boots and sit down and, and uh, just make it a nice, comfortable experience. Uh, and so it's a, you know, it's a combination of a retail shop and a, uh, and a boot office. And then I do, I do some leather work there as well. So it's, uh, it, it's good. Awesome. Love to hear it. Uh, it looks great. The space looks great when you were showing me on the call uh, several months ago. Um, okay, so this one, this question, I remember there being an issue with uh, Cayman recently because some laws changed about a year or so ago, uh, and you had to discontinue Cayman leather boots. Um, can you explain what those changes were and sort of what happened with the laws that so you can't? sell Cayman boots anymore? Well, so originally I thought it was a law change and it wasn't. And what I ended up finding out is that the way I was bringing them in was not the correct way. So, so the sites permit, it's the obligation of the, um, of the manufacturer to come up with the sites permit. I'm considered the importer because i don't own the factory where they are being made okay that's the way it's done throughout the world however in mexico with the bootmakers down there it's a little bit different they put the burden on the importer and and that's not technically how it's supposed to be done but it's the way they decide to do it and so if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do it that way then uh then tough luck um, and, and, and so that's why with my, all my lines from Spain, I can do, you know, American alligator and I can do all that. Um, but with my, with my, uh, Escambia line, um, I cannot with my new JW line, I will be able to, to offer those products. And that, that, okay. that, that's a, that's a real, uh, um, kind of simplified version and, uh, and so that's, that's going on. And so I, you know, I had, I had a lot of phone conversations with the department of fish and wildlife and trying to understand it. If you go on and you try to read about it, it's really difficult to understand. And they explained a lot of, to me, what is right, what is not right, where the burden lies, who's doing it right, who's not. And so that's the thing. And, and, and basically to, to make it to, to, to why I can't do it. So when you have a sites permit, you have every six months, you have to apply for uh, a sites permit for that particular species, that particular hide, okay? And you have to predetermine how many you're gonna, you're gonna um, ship, okay? And that shipment can only be done one time. And, and so y you get a sites permit and say, okay, I, I'm gonna make uh, 200 pairs of Cayman boots and you pay the taxes for the 200 pairs, even if you end up only doing 100, you 200. But you can only make the shipment one time. And and so uh, and so being a company that does made to order, I wouldn't really be made to order if I had 100 pairs of Cayman sitting in a warehouse and you ordered your pair of Cayman. So so with my Escambia line, it being a, a made to order boot, I don't think I'll ever offer those products. With my JW line, 
boots that that we uh, will stock and sell. Uh, those I I can and, and do offer. Uh, you know the things like came in an American alligator and, and that stuff. That makes sense and is kind of a strange loophole that you fell through as a special order company. Um, sorry yeah. to hear that, but I'm glad that you'll be able to restock them in the in the new signature line. Thank you for explaining that and keeping it basic for us. <laughs> All right. Here we got some more questions. Uh, will you export boots oh, or will you ship boots to Canada? Or did you have Jeremy, something to add back? I, I do. I do right. because this it's something that uh that yeah, I know it affects me. It yeah. affects uh other companies and it affects the 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 custom boot makers here in the United States. Cool. We want to hear we, it. We, you do a good job of monitoring and I really appreciate it on your page, but on some of the other boot pages, you see these, these uh, advertisements for these, you know, Cayman skins or Python skins or whatever coming out of Mexico and you can buy one boot and they'll ship it to a net. When you do that, you're getting that boot illegally. The, a, a single boot cannot be shipped from Mexico to you. That is, that is against the, the, the site's, regulation that that maker isn't buying a sites permit for one pair of boot and so all that does is that gets ends up getting caught by the by the uh, department of fish and wildlife and it's just one more tick against the boot industry that there's a lot of people in this country want to completely shut down and so uh, I, I tell all my customers and non-customers out there when you see that i know it's a great deal i know you're getting a good boot but you're damaging the boot industry by buying them that way because look look what's happening in some states where they've completely wiped out the sale of any kind of hide wow yeah that's something that we didn't know really was happening or the behind the scenes of the industry here uh so thank you for telling us that uh we appreciate it definitely support the uh the businesses uh headquartered uh here in the u.s that are obeying all the laws and taxes that uh, are required for the now, businesses. Now your, your big, your big Mexico brands, they have the site permits to ship, but I'm just talking about, you see a lot of individual sellers that are selling, um, you know, exotic skins and, and they're, they're, they're not shipping them the legal way. Makes sense. Makes sense. Like yeah. the random people who come up on Facebook or Instagram that, or something like that. That's exactly right. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. 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 Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let's, let's go to another question here in the live chat. Now, Brian C, uh, might be talking about a couple of different boot names that you have. I'm not familiar with all of the names of your boots, but he asks if you can describe the difference between the Seville and the DeLuna profile. Okay. So the DeLuna is a, um, is a, uh, kind of our Escambia version of our French toe. It is not quite as narrow as a, um, as a French toe, but it, it's not as, it, ours isn't as wide as like a, um, as like a wide square toe. It's, it, it's kind of in between, but it tapers at the end, much the way that a, uh, that a French toe it does. And then the Seville is like your standard square toe that you see across the industry. And it doesn't, have that tapering like a French toe does. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Also, okay. another question here from uh, Keith Tanawaski asks, can you export boots to Canada? Can Will you ship to Canada? Uh, I have done it before. Um, the problem that I get into is it, for companies like mine where I do free exchanges, free returns, and, 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 I, and I honor that, is that it, it's expensive to ship to Canada. And then if for some reason you get the boot and it doesn't fit right and we have to go through that process again, it's a, it's a losing effort for me. I mean, the, the amount I would have to charge in shipping and to make up for that, it, it wouldn't be worth it for the buyers. So I, I've done it before, but it's it's – I, it's not something that I offer for that reason. Yep. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. 
I hear you. International shipping can be a pain um, a lot of the time. You know, if if I had a warehouse full of, you know, 500 of the pairs and they all looked one way, then maybe that was that's a hurdle I could overcome. I send it to you, it doesn't fit, you send it back. I just the very next day send a new pair. But because I'm making these to order, um, it, it, it's just a difficult process to do. Makes sense. Thank you for the question, Keith. And uh, great thank question. You for the answer, uh, Blake. Uh, now that you have a new product line, all the new product lines organized them into new brands, rebranded everything. You're ready for the next five years. What are the goals of JW Boot Company moving forward? Um, make it a you know, uh, a really good business. I mean, it, the, there's the, the, the effort out seeds the reward right now. And I'm hoping that that will flip. Um, you know, it, it, this is back to the very first statement about underfunding. You know, I, I wish that I could just pump a bunch more money into it. It would, really help in certain situations. I mean, it doesn't fix everything, but there's a lot of situations where if I could just pump some more money into this or pump some more money into that, it, you know, I would, I, my, my brand would be a lot bigger and a lot more known. And so that, that's really is, is I'm, I'm taking it slowly. There's a lot of good to that, but there's also a lot of difficulties to it. And so. Yeah. It sounds like it. Have you thought about um, going the investor route. I mean, we sort of talked to um, Clyde Bennett the third last month, and he was he just started. He was thinking about maybe going that investor route. But we look at Tacovas with all of their investors. We look at even Thursday Boots. I just did a vi video about them. They have investors. They went through a Series A and um, are sort of getting investors like tech companies. Uh, are now have you thought about that and are there any disadvantages to doing something like that yeah uh, I, I think about it for about two seconds and then i quit thinking about it <laughs> um so it's it's a whole nother can of worms and it's not easy i mean yeah. uh and uh and then you're working for somebody and uh which is which is uh not easy. And I, it's just not something I want to take on. That doesn't mean that the opportunity won't arise, but right now it's not something I want to, I want to take on. Yep. That makes sense. I mean, yep. there's, there's going to be difficulties with no matter which path you go down mm -hmm. That's um, right. and people are going to be uh, down. Like you're going to, you, they're going to be down your neck either way, right at your back. It's going to be difficult. So uh I think I think you're going about it the right way, you know, bootstrapping as it is and uh, keeping control over everything all along the way. And uh, we all wish you the best, Blake, for real. It's uh, it's been great. And uh, we all appreciate your support in the community uh, by, you know, the giveaways every year. And uh, you've made a lot of folks happy out there. And we're all very appreciative of it. Well, I appreciate it. I, I you know, there's so many people that. uh that support my business, uh, whether it's through just the, the nice comments on my uh, Instagram page or Facebook page or, uh, you know, buying my boots. Um, I, I appreciate them all. And, uh, you know, when you were you talk about supporting, you know, a small American business, even though we make our boots overseas, I, I'm a I'm a small business uh, you know, a mom and pop shop located in Pensacola, Florida. And so I, I greatly appreciate all the, uh, all the business I get. Awesome. Well, we wish you the best Blake. Um, and we look forward to all the moves that you make here in the years to come. We're all really impressed of how far you've come, uh, since you started and, uh, we are looking forward to it each and every day. So thank you so much, Blake. Thank you for being a guest here this evening. I want to remind everybody that, uh, the Escambia Boot Company giveaway is still going on and you have a chance to enter to win a pr brand new pair in your size, both the ladies and the men, all thanks to Blake here. So um, 
huge shout out to you, Blake. Thank you so much. Uh, there's another week to enter, so be sure to get on that. Blake, do you want to uh, sort of close us out here to uh, with either any words of wisdom or uh, just how people can get boots from you? Like, what's the best way to go about it? Um, go. You can go to scambiabootcompany.com or jwbootcompany.com. It'll take you to my webpage. And there's, I always tell people, if, if you see something you like on one boot, but it's not offered on another boot, just reply to the little chat. Um, and I'm the one that answers it. It, it. It's, you know, it's never anybody else. And, uh, and we can usually create, uh, the combination that you want. In fact, most of the pairs that you see, um, on, uh, my website have been some sort of design created by our customers. And the only reason you don't see it is because it hadn't been created yet. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. So if you guys have a special dream pair that you, that you have, uh, definitely reach out to Blake um, because chances are he can make it for you. Thank you so much, Blake, for your time this evening. Uh, we wish you the best. And uh, we're looking forward to that giveaway here next weekend. Uh, hope to see you there live too in the live chat. Absolutely. Can't wait. All right. Appreciate see it. See you then. Thank you so much, Blake. Stick around. Everybody else, Thanks. have a great evening. And thank you for joining us. Peace, everybody. All right.